chapter 12, energy production. It's called biochemical energy production. This chapter starts the second half or second two thirds of biochemistry. Like I said, biochemistry, if it is a one semester or two semester course, the first one third are you guys have already studied. What are these bio, macro, bio molecules? Proteins, lipids, uh, nucleic acids, and carbohydrates. Okay, an introduction of these bio molecules. And then the second two thirds or second half uh, biochemistry becomes more interesting, talking about how these molecules are metabolized, are synthesized, are utilized, are degraded, are, are hydrolyzed, and everything inside ourselves. Okay, it is a huge part of biochemistry. And of course, today we only started giving you an overview of this whole process. And hope for the summarize can kind of like a, like a tiny bit, if you want to interest in more, or if you study further courses, uh, you will get deeper in, in, in that part. Okay, it's a very brief introduction about uh, a very common word you're gonna hear and see a lot called metabolism. So let's take a look. What is biochemical energy production and uh, what is metabolism? Okay, this word again is the second half of biochemistry. Metabolism is the sum total of all the chemical reactions or biochemical reactions in a living organ. Okay, all the reactions, it's called a metabolism. Okay, the reaction has two directions. Okay, those reactions can be divide into two directions. One direction is the large molecules we take from our diet. Carbohydrates, lipid, protein, nucleic acids are what? Hydrolyzed, divided, and then become what? Smaller ones. Okay, we then, we're gonna uh, ingest it, digest those. And that direction of metabolism, those reactions, like chop them off into smaller ones, it's called the catabolism. And the other direction is we use these small molecules, amino acids, monosaccharides, nucleotides or nucleosides, to make our own large molecules, to make, make our cell grow, to make our body grow. It's called anabolism. Okay, anabolism. So metabolism can be divided by two directions. In this chapter, okay, in this chapter, we won't study or we won't focus on that direction, synthesizing big molecules. Like I said, we briefly talk about in the few, first few chapters what are made, big molecules are made of: monosaccharides, amino acids, nucleotides, and lipids. But their synthesis is a huge part of biochemistry. In this chapter, we talk a little more about this direction, catabolism. Meaning, meaning means what? How do we digest large molecules from diet into smaller molecules? And during this process, okay, during just a, one of the main purpose of this direction, not only is we get these small building blocks for our own molecule, but also in this process, one of the main reason is or purpose is to produce energy. Right, we need energy to survive. For every single process of us, movement, contraction, muscle contraction, or even cell reactions need energy. So one of the purpose of this direction is to produce energy. Okay, to produce energy. That is why we title of this chapter is biochemical energy production. Okay, energy production. Now, speaking of metabolism, like I said, we don't go any details about metabolism. Uh, most of biochemical reactions are stepwise. They won't be completed by one step. Okay, there are stepwise from A to B to C to D to E, very long sequence of reactions, okay, stepwise. And of course, every single step is catalyzed by an enzyme. The stepwise reactions could be in these two formats. One format is a sequence of reactions from one chemical formula to 
another and to the end product. Or another reaction type of reaction is a cyclic pathway. Okay, after a cycle, we return to the original starting material. So we call this type of sequence the reactions the metabolic pathways. Okay, there are many two types of metabolic pathways. One type is this linear sequence. Another one is cyclic. Okay, cyclic. And like we said in chapter 10, okay, these metabolic pathways are often regulated by feedback inhibition. What is feedback? The product inhibits what? The first enzyme of a metabolic pathway. Okay, that's a very smart way of living things does because the product would tell, hey, do I need to, do we need to keep going the sequence or you need to stop or slow down? Okay, this is a very smart nature design, smart way of regulation in nature designs. So these are again some overviews. Right? Now next. In order to study biochemical energy production, we need to know where energy production takes place. Okay, our cells are called eukaryotic cells. I said we're more advanced cells. And the functional parts of our cells are enclosed by membranes. And we call those enclosed parts, compartments, organelles. Okay, you guys study biology or microbiology or ANP, I don't know. These are small compartments that carries a function of a cell, just like our organs in our body. Okay, these are organelles. And this is an overview picture of a cell, some major organelles of a cell, the nucleus, the ribosome. Okay, you guys study ribosome is what? Where proteins are synthesized. The membrane of our cell, and most importantly, okay, most importantly, in this chapter, we're gonna take a look at these sausage-like organisms. There's a lot of them inside our cell, in the cytoplasm, in the, in the, in the cytoplasm of, of the part of the cell. And these are called mitochondria. Okay, they look like sausage, and that is where energy is produced. Okay, energy is produced. Okay, here, uh, I won't go over everything. And these are some, some of the organelles listed in the previous picture. Like I said, we will take a look at this mitochondria organelle because that's where most chemical energy is needed. The energy needed for the cell are, are produced. Okay, that's why this, this organelle is called the, the, the powerhouse of our cell because that organelle produces the energy for cellular functions. Okay, so let's take a look of this mitochondria. Okay, mitochondria, uh, it's the plural form. The this, this singular form is called a mitochondrium. Okay, the single one is called a mitochondrium. And this is what it looks like under microscope, electron microscope. You can see it's sausage-like. And in fact, mitochondria, not only it is membrane enclosed, but it actually has two layers of membrane or two membrane enclosing the inside structure. You can see that outside the membrane, of course, includes the whole organelle. But inside the, the, the organelle, there's another layers of membrane in here. So basically, the mitochondria has two compartments inside. Okay, two compartments inside. The membrane on the outermost is called the outer membrane. Another layer of membrane is called the inner membrane. Between the outer membrane and the inner membrane, these spaces are called intermembrane space. Okay, intermembrane space. And also, if you take a look at the picture, what do you find the inside of the membrane? What it looks like? A lot of protruding parts, right? A lot of like this folds protruding part. What is that used for? What do you think? Nature creates this kind of thing protruding. Why the membrane is not like outer smooth? Why the inside is like this? To increase what? To increase the surface area of, of the mitochondria. The reason is that because, okay, because the enzymes 
that are synthesizing or producing energy are located on this protruding part. We call those Christi or Christe Christi. Okay, they're protruding. And those tiny particles, you can see that these tiny particles on, in, on that protruding crystal are the energy producing enzymes. We call that ATP synthase complex. Okay, what does the synthase mean? ACE means what? Enzyme. Synthase means what? The enzyme that synthesizes ATP. Okay, we're going to take a look what is ATP okay, in a few minutes. And finally, the space inside the inner membrane is called the matrix of the mitochondria. Okay, make sure you know every part of the mitochondria, because again, this chapter is about energy production. Okay, outer membrane, inner membrane, crystal, matrix, and inner membrane space. And where is ATP synthase located? It's on the crystal. Again, the reason they have that like this is you want to increase what? the area, the surface inside it, because so that you have a lot more energy can be produced at the same time. Okay, you guys studied anatomy, right? Our internal intestines is like this, right? The small intestine is like that. There are a lot of protruding parts. Why? Because we want to increase the surface areas to work, to better absorb the nutrient nutrients. Same idea. So, before we study the energy production, we first need to take a look at some key intermediates, or key chemical compounds, of course, called metabolic intermediates. Those are associated in this catabolism pathway, the direction for energy production. Okay, or some are directly associated with energy production. Okay, these are a few pairs of important intermediates. The first group or pair is ATP, ADP, and AMP. Okay, of course, they're all in abbreviations. Okay. Even though you, have, you don't know what is ATP, ADP is, but you have studied AMP in chapter 11, right? What is AMP? Adonisin, 5 prime monophosphate, right? And we don't have a D in front of it, means what? The sugar is ribose. Okay, why ribose? Because these things are not inside the nucleus. They are outside the nucleus. There's nothing to do with DNA. That's why they're not deoxy. So if M stands for monophosphate, that means what? D stands for diphosphate. T stands for triphosphate. Very good. That's what the picture shows here. Okay, ribose. Adenine, the base is adenine. This is adenosine, 5' prime, monophosphate, diphosphate, triphosphate. Okay, this whole thing with three phosphate is called ATP. Okay, of course, with two phosphate is ADP. One phosphate is what? AMP. Okay, this is one of the most important intermediate associated with energy production that is actually involved in energy production. You're going to see that. Another group shown here. Okay, I know you guys have been talking about this before. NAD plus NADH. FAD, FADH2. Okay, we're going to see their full names later. Okay, these two groups are pairs of compounds. Okay, by looking at the formula or the abbreviation, you can see that. The difference between each pair is what? Hydrogen. Okay, hydrogen. Hydrogen is not a bridge, just hydrogen atoms. So these intermediates are involved in what? Accepting or donating hydrogens. And we studied before in organic chemistry, when you give hydrogen or add hydrogen or remove hydrogen, these reactions are called what? Reduction. Oxidation or reduction. So these intermediates are involved in the redox process. Whenever there's an oxidation reduction, this will be involved. If you want somebody to take the hydrogen, 
this one of these two will take the hydrogen. So whatever has the hydrogen, FADH2 and NADH are what? Are they reduced the form because they take the hydrogen in. They are involved in redox reactions. Okay. During the energy process, the energy generation process, half of those reactions in the pathway are redox reactions. That means those reactions are catalyzed by what? Oxidoreductase. And finally, the last pair important intermediates are called coenzyme A and acetyl coenzyme A. Okay, we'll show the structure of coenzyme A later, but the difference between coenzyme A and acetyl coenzyme A is apparently this group, cut acetyl group. Okay, you guys have seen acetyl group many times in fact before. <coughs> acetyl group is a two carbon group. CH3 CO double bond. So what does acetyl coenzyme does is what? To transfer a two carbon unit in the metabolic pathway. Okay, like a carrier. This guy carries what? The acetyl group. Okay, again, you will see more details later. I just want to show you. I bring out the names on abbreviation first, then we'll see them in their action when we study them. Okay, again, first one is the structure of ATP because I'm studying it already. Okay, so again, let's take a look. What is the, the simplest or simplified version of the catabolism or of that direction of metabolism of breaking down large molecules? And most importantly, how energy is produced. Okay, it can be coarsely, coarsely separated into four stages. Okay, again, we're doing the very superficial part of biochemistry. We're using one chapter summarized, probably five or six chapters, if you really study biochemistry. Okay, these four stages are listed here. Stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four. These four stages are, again, in the direction of what? Catabolism, breaking down large molecules. And we're going to take a look at each one of these stages and what the products are and what it does and how energy is produced after these four stages. Okay, the first stage is what? Digestion. Okay, the first stage is digestion. What is digestion? Digestion basically means what happens in our digestive tract. In our stomach, in our intestine. A lot of enzymes in our digestive tract will basically hydrolyze the large molecules we take from our food. Okay, main way you eat, you eat these three types of food. Okay, even you're eating nucleic acid, but there's a very small amount. Okay, we don't even list it here. We list these three types because those are the three main nutrients from what? from diet, fat, carb, protein. Okay, fat is what? Triglycerides, right? If you guys remember we studied fat and oil, what's fat and oil? Triglycerides. Carbohydrates, many of you take your carbs food, starch containing carbs, potato, uh, noodle, rice, bread, everything, carbs. And protein, of course milk, beans, all kinds of meat. These large molecules will be hydrolyzed by the enzymes in our digestive tract, mostly inside our intestine. And after they're digested, the large molecules become what? They're small building blocks. Triglycerides become what? Glycerol and fatty acids, ester bonds are cleaved. Carbohydrates become Monosaccharides, meaning glucose. If you're eating starch, they're basically glucose. And finally, proteins become what? Mm -hmm. Amino acid. Okay, that's digestion. Okay, digestion. Those reactions don't even happen inside the cell. They're actually happening outside the cell. In where? Again, in our inner digestive tract. And after they're digested, 
they will be absorbed into where? Into your bloodstream. To be utilized by <coughs> sex. Okay, that's the first stage. Okay, this is what happens in digestion. Saliva enzymes such as amylase, you guys used actually in the lab, will start that in your mouth to digest the starch through the esophagus. And then gastric juices in the stomach will continue that digestion. And then mainly the digestive enzymes and bile salts in the small intestine will liberate these small molecules. Okay, most of the digestion happens here, of course, in the small, small intestine. And finally, these small molecules will cross the intestinal membranes to the blood and then transport it into what? Into your cells across your body. So these are, again, what's really happening in, in, in digestion. Okay. Here are what you will get for each type of biomolecules. You can take a brief look. I won't spend too much time in here. Just this is what happens for carbohydrates. Okay, you can see that saliva will change that to what? And in small stomach and small intestine, they will become what? And eventually, they will be across, crossing the membrane. Okay, so this is what happens for carbohydrates. This is what happens for protein. Okay, this is what happens for triglycerides, fat and oil. Okay, again, this is more like anatomy physiology, what happens in your digestive tract. Okay, you guys probably study more than this. I just want to show you what each biomolecules, when they pass through our digestive tract, what they become to in different stages. Okay, if you're interested in more, you can read. All right. Next stage, after digestion, we have tons of these small building blocks, fatty acids, glucose, and amino acid. These small building blocks inside the cells will undergo the metabolic pathway. Okay, linear ones. Each one will have a series of unifreds. That's why this, these are five or six chapters. Each group of molecule will cover one chapter or two. If you study biochemistry, it's very interesting. You will find the most interesting part of biochemistry is study these reactions. Okay, we'll see how amazing our cell does. Okay, but no matter what type of small building box you got from digestion, they ended up with the same thing. A two carbon building block. What is that two carbon building block? The acetyl group. What is the acetyl group? CH3, CO double bond. This is the acetyl group. Okay, the production of this two carbon unit is the second stage of biochemical energy production. You can see they all have the same destiny. They will become the same thing, two carbon unit. Of course, this two carbon unit is not free. They have to be carried by someone. And if you guys remember, the carrier of the two carbon unit is what? It's coenzyme A. Okay, coenzyme A. CO, capital C, lowercase o, stands for coenzyme. A is the name of the coenzyme. Okay, this is the structure of coenzyme A. You can see that here. At the end of the coenzyme A, there's a sulfur, the thiol group, which will make a thiol ester bond, very similar to an ester bond. Ester is what? COO. This is COS. Okay, it's very similar, but this bond is easier to be cleaved. Why? Because you want to, to use the acetyl group right away. So that's why it is a very nice carrier for this two carbon unit. Okay, this two carbon unit. Okay, you can see this is again. Basically, coenzyme A is a what? Is a nucleotide. If you take a look, it has a has a adenine here, and sugar, phosphate. It basically, is a nucleotide. But Coenzyme A is the one that carries the two carbon unit 
need to activate that two carbon unit to enter the next stage. Does it make sense? Guys, okay, again, you can use the abbreviations. Okay, you don't have to spell the whole name. Coenzyme A is what? COA. Acetyl group, you can just use acetyl. After the second stage, okay, after the second stage, all these small building blocks become what? Acetyl coenzyme A. Again, they're carried by coenzyme A. This two carbon unit, of course, in this chapter, we are going to study energy production. So they're supposed to go what? Downstream to further breaking down because we want to produce energy. But this guy, like I said here, is used as a what? What's that called? How do you guys, what is this? What is mirror? Um, different, like a lot of different pathways. Right, like what? Like kind of like a central part, like a starting material for what? For different pathways. Okay, take a look at the picture here. The acetylcoenzyme A can be used, of course, later on to produce energy, but mostly they can use what? To produce all kinds of biomolecules. Okay, especially fatty acids. Okay, these two carbon units can be used to build our own fatty acids. And if you guys remember in chapter eight, when we study fatty acids, we learned a fact Fatty acids are always even numbered. You guys remember that? From 12 number to 20 number. Why they're always even numbered? Because they're synthesized by what? By the two carbon unit. So if you want to build on the fatty acid, you have to build on by what? By two. How can you get it all numbered? You cannot because the units are two carbon numbers. They are used, the two carbon units not only go downstream, they are actually used at a building block for our biomolecules, for our biomolecules. But most importantly, the two carbon unit will enter stage three. Okay, stage three, called citric acid cycle. To what? To produce energy. Because Every single thing in our, in our cellular activity needs energy. And those energy are from what? From your food. How do they become energy? First, <coughs> from the two carbon unit. So, here comes stage three. Now, because as you see that, no matter which type of food from nutrient, Eventually, they all become what? Become the two carbon unit. So after stage two, starting from stage three, you're basically starting from what? The same starting material, which is what? The two carbon unit, acetylcholinesamide. Is that right? So that means no matter which type of food you're talking about, eventually they become the same thing, acetylcholinesamide, to enter what? to enter stage three. So sometimes we call stage three and stage four the common metabolic pathway. What does common mean? Everyone shares the same number, but now become the same thing. You don't discriminate, you don't ask, hey, wh where does this acetylate come from? It doesn't matter where it comes from, glyceride, uh, triglyceride, or protein, or, or, or carbohydrate. Now they enter the stage three, in the same format, in the same molecule, acetylcoenzyme. So we call stage three and four common metabolic pathway. Okay, common means what? They enter the same, as the same molecule. So let's take a look at stage three, which is called citric acid cycle. Okay, sometimes or called Krebs cycle. Perhaps it's named after the, the biochemist who discovered 
the citric acid cycle. Okay. The reason it's called a cycle, okay, the reason it's called a cycle is because the pathway in this stage is what? It's cyclic. Okay, cyclic. That means you start with something, you end up with the same thing again and again and again. Okay, you will find it's very, very nice way nature designs. Again, like I said, when you study these, you will find that how this life thing is possible. Okay, you, when you learn biochemistry, you will be amazed no matter who creates life from evolution or whatever. It's amazing. Okay, it's truly amazing because of these biochemical reactions. Okay, but first, I want to show you what are the results. Okay, what do you get from stage three? Before we take a look at the stage three, this is the overall reaction of stage three. Okay, what happened in stage three? Before the reaction, we have what? We have the acetyl coenzyme. That's what enters the stage three. And in stage three, we need these intermediates. We need three NAD plus. We need one FAD. We need a GDP. What does GDP stands for? Guanosine diphosphate. Okay, just like ADP, this is now GDP. It's also a purine base. And then we need phosphate in water. Okay, these are the materials we need for stage three. And after that, these are something that are produced. Acetyl coenzyme A, acetyl group is gone. You have what? Free coenzyme A. And where does these two carbon go? Remember, this is how many carbon? Two, two carbons. Where do they go? Carbon dioxide. That's why we breathe out carbon dioxide, right? You know you're breathing in oxygen, you breathe out the carbon dioxide. Where does the carbon dioxide come from? From these two carbons, from the stage three, citric acid cycle. And then FAD becomes FADH2, NAD plus becomes NADH, three of course becomes three, okay. And finally, the GDP becomes GTP. You means what? You add a phosphate, that's why you need a what? You need one phosphate here. You see that? This is the balanced results, the net reaction of stage three. So if you take a look at the result, you may wonder, then what's the purpose? What do you think the purpose of stage three is? The purpose of this stage is basically what? Oxidize the two carbon unit, breathe out carbon dioxide, then more importantly is to what? To generate these two guys. Not energy yet, to generate these two guys. Remember, you oxidize something, you need to reduce something. Who are reduced? NAD plus and FAD are produced. These are the reduced form, you see that? These are the most important results. If you want to ask for stage three, is what? Produced, the reduced form of NADH, NAD and FAD. Of course, there's a byproduct, GTP, which is a small part of energy produced. The main purpose of stage three is these two guys. They will be used in stage four later. Okay, so let's take a look at the citric acid cycle. Citric acid. In my class, I'm not asking you to, to study every single reaction, but I recommend you to take a look at each reaction and at least know what type of enzyme is used. Remember we studied in chapter 10, right? I ask you to look at a reaction, even your test, look at the reaction, determine, hey, is this reaction catalyzed by oxidative reductase, transferase, hydrolase, ligase? These eight reactions, each one is catalyzed by one type of enzyme. Okay, you will see that they're very simple because the structure are related. Okay, structure related. Okay, I'll tell you more detail, but take a look at this cycle. This is the first step. There are eight reactions. This is the first step, is the 
acetylcoenzyme A enters what? The cycle. You guys see that? You guys see that? Now take a look. How does it enter the cycle? Breaks the double bond of water. It actually starts with a four carbon compound. After this enters, the four carbon compound it becomes a what? Six carbon compound. You guys see that? This guy has six carbon now. This guy has four carbon. Okay, four carbon. I don't need you to know this reaction. This, this reaction is basically actually catalyzed by lights. Okay, Elias reaction, adding something. And then after this, this guy has what? Has six carbons. Okay, every time if you lose a carbon, for example, at step three, take a look. This guy has five from six carbon, now becomes what? Five carbon. When you lose a carbon, you're actually losing in the form of what? CO2. Do you guys see that? And here, this five carbon lose another carbon with only four carbon. Now you lose another what? CO two. Okay, that, these are the steps with CO two is is getting out. Okay, it's getting out. And also, if you take a look at these eight reactions, they're all numbered. How many reactions? Take a look, guys. Involves NAD plus an FAD. Take a look. How many reactions? Three involves NADH. How many reactions total involves NAD and FAD? Four reactions. Step what? Three, four, six, and eight. These what? These four reactions are oxidation reactions. Whoever the molecule there got oxidized, then what gets reduced? NAD plus and FAD gets reduced. That's why you, they become what? NADH and FADHD. Okay, these are some facts about the citric acid cycle. Like I said, I, I won't ask you the detailed reactions, but I do want you to take a look at each reaction and ask yourself, what do you think the type of reaction is? Especially what type of reaction, what type of enzyme catalyzing that reaction? All citric acid reactions occur in the matrix, except step six occurs in the inner membrane. I mean, between the inner and outside the membrane. Okay, the other reaction also inside the matrix. That's why I said, the powerhouse of the cell, the mitochondria. The fuel of citric acid, acid cycle apparently is what? Is the two carbon unit acetyl coenzyme A. And those two carbons eventually they leave the cycle in the form of what? Of CO2. Some heat will be released as well. Four of the reactions, we said three, four, six, eight are oxidation and redox reactions. The oxidizing agents are NAD plus and FAD. Of course, they will be reduced. NAD plus, the CO double bond inside it will be reduced. FAD, the CC double bond will be reduced. That's how they carry hydrogen. Okay, you might wonder, how do they carry hydrogen? They have CO double bond or CC double bond. And of course, like I said, the purpose, if you wanna ask, what do you think the most important reason for a stage for this cycle is what is the production of these two these guys that will be carried to stage four okay carry to stage four in the meantime during the cycle a high energy substance GTP is also produced which is one equivalent of ATP GTP, ATP, they can interchange with each other. So these are the results for citric acid cycle. And most importantly, the cycle always goes on and on. The only thing that's entering the cycle and leaving the cycle are what? Are the carbons. Okay, two carbon unit, two carbon unit. And during these reactions, of course, 
you want to generate that reduce the form of NAD, NAD and FAD, which will be used in stage four. GTP doesn't use stage four. GTP is done. They can, they can, GTP can convert to ATP if they need it. Okay, but the most important purpose of stage three is to generate NADH and FA. Now after that, the NADH and FADH2 from stage three will enter stage four, which is called the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. Okay, this is the real stage in which energy is produced. Okay, real stage in which energy is produced. We didn't talk about it before, but I want to say here, when you produce energy for a biochemical system, for a cell. The energy has to be stored by someone. Okay, you cannot just fr produce free energy, then they just heat. Okay, they just only work in our body, we cannot use that energy. We cannot use heat directly. We can, the heat can keep us warm, but we cannot use the energy to do anything. In order to do anything, the energy has to be carried by a biomolecule, by an intermediate. That molecule is the one we mentioned earlier, ATP. Okay, ATP. So in stage four, the main purpose of stage four called electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation is what? Is basically the production of what? Of ATP. What is energy? ATP is energy for us. Because again, we cannot just produce free energy. We have to store the energy in somewhere. So we that use that energy, and that energy is stored in where? In the chemical bond of ATP. If we need, we use that energy from ATP. We hydrolyze ATP, we use that energy. So the purpose of stage four is basically what? Making no matter what cellular process needed, if you need energy, the energy has to be from ATP. Okay, so let's take a look very briefly the stage four of, of, of energy production. Okay, stage four happens inside mitochondria as well at the ATP synthase complex. NADH and FADH2 supply the fuel needed for ATP molecule, for the produce, production of ATP. That's why I said the stage three, the purpose of stage three is to what? To make NADH and FADH2 because they are fueling the energy production system. Okay, we'll just take, take a picture right away after this to show you how that works. <coughs> And during this fourth stage, stage four, the oxygen, okay, the oxygen we breathe in is used here. You may wonder, NADH and FADH2, they carry what? Hydrogen, right? Eventually this hydrogen has to be what? Has to be taken by somebody. Who takes it? The oxygen you're breathing. Hydrogen combined with oxygen to give you what? Water. Okay, that's where oxygen is used. Ox we're breathing oxygen used anywhere in the fourth stage of in the stage four of the energy production. We didn't use anywhere else. The other place is don't you don't need oxygen. Oxygen is used here to accept where? To accept the hydrogen from stage three. And the enzymes that are needed for the reoxidation of NADH and FADH production are arranged 
Okay, in in the in in the, in the in the in a very nice manner, they're like a simple lines. Okay, the enzymes are in, uh, arranged one at a, at a, at a, at a, at a, after another. Okay, the reaction has happened one after another, and the enzymes are arranged in like a really a simple line machines, and that is called the electron transport chain. Okay, electron transport chain. And finally, the reason we have Okay, we have the energy needed to produce ATP. The driving force is something called a pH gradient. Okay, the pH gradient. Let's take a look at the picture. You will get a better idea about the fourth stage. Okay, you can see that there are two complexes. One complex of enzyme takes NADH. Another complex enzyme, they take <coughs> FADH2. No matter NADH or FADH2, they are basically fueling these complexes to pump hydrogen plus from one side of the membrane to another. They keep pumping the enzyme to one layer. To, 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 to one, one side of the in, in layer. And because there's a difference of the potential of the, of the hydrogen plus, of the proton, so the pH of these two layers is different. And that is the driving force for what? For ATP synthesis. Okay, for ATP synthesis. The pH ingredients of these two layers caused by NADH and FADH2. No, you have to have the proton, like a ingredients. Eventually, okay, eventually the proton transfer. You can say the last step. You can say the proton because the ingredients proton pumps back. You make ATP because of the high potential of that one layer driving the what the synthesis of ATP. Okay, again, we are only giving a very brief introduction. This this complex of of, of, of assembly lines also very interesting because of the electron potential of these layers, okay, causing the, give you the energy of making ATP molecules. Okay, but there are two complex, two groups of assembly lines. One group takes FADH2, another group takes NADH. Okay, of course, this is the citric acid, it's like supplying, keep supplying FAD and NADH2. Okay, if you're interested, I, I have some readings in, in that. Uh, part as well. All right, so again, of course, in the last part is the oxygen you breathe in eventually would, will accept the proton uh, from NADH and FADH2 to, to produce water. And finally, like I said, the whole four stages are basically producing what? producing ATP. Okay, the final product is ATP production. That's the reason for these four stages. And meanwhile, all life processes, your muscle contraction, nutrient transport, synthesizing, anything, that is energy is what? Is from ATP. So this is the turnover of ATP. At the fourth stage, how ATP is synthesized? By adding a phosphate to what? To ADP. And then after you have ATP, whenever you use the energy, you will what? Break down ATP into ATP and the phosphate. So this process turns over very fast in our cells. You need energy, you make ATP. You use the energy, you use what? Energy from ATP. So that bond between the diphosphate and the triphosphate, that particular bond stored a lot of energy for us to use. Okay, when you hydrolyze the bond, you produce energy. When you make the bond, you what? You store the energy. The energy is stored in the form of that chemical bond, okay, in that particular chemical bond. And sometimes, not common, 
If you change ATP to AMP, you can release more energy, but that's not common. Okay, usually, you only take energy from ATP. But the second phosphate also contains some energy, but in rare cases, you will use that part. Okay, it does happen, okay, but not common. Okay, this is the common turnover of ATP breaking down and synthesis. And finally, you may wonder, for each cycle, for each two carbon unit of acetyl coenzyme A, how many ATP molecules will be produced? Okay, different sources, different take books, takes because the, the actual number varies. Okay, this is one from your book. For each NADH, Around 2.5, some book says three. Okay, around 2.5 ATP will be produced. For each FADH2, around 1.5 ATP will be produced. So remember, in each cycle, we have how many NADH? Three, right? So from NADH, there are approximately 7.5 ATP. Plus that 1.5, nine ATP. And then we know from the citric acid cycle, we also have a GTP, that is the equivalent of ADP. So total, in your book, 10 ATP will be produced per one fuel molecule, per one two carbon unit. Nine ATP from where? From stage four. One ATP is from GTP. Somewhere it says 11, some books. Okay, but here, your book, 10 ATP molecules per what? Per cycle, with the fueling of acetyl coenzyme. Okay, that's called the yield, the theoretical yield of ATP production. All right, that is all for this chapter, and this is the summary of this chapter. We don't have a quiz for this chapter, so these are the something uh, you need to study for for chapter 12. Okay, something you need to know, just go back again. Study the notes will be enough for knowing all these. Okay, you don't need to read the book. Okay, let me stop the recording.